Help support our coverage with a free account on Privacy, the service that keeps you protected when shopping online. Get $5 to try it now by using promo code QZZ2J. Let's go ahead and bring our next guest on from Brink Biotics. Eric Lloyd, how are you today, sir? I'm doing really well. How are you? Doing fantastic. Uh, tell us a little bit about Brink Biotics and what it is that you guys are all about. So Brink Bionics is a neurotech company from Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. And what we're developing is what I have on right now. This is Impulse. So Impulse is a wearable neural interface that augments or optimizes reaction time for PC gamers. So if you're playing fast-paced action game shooters or other RTS-type games, uh, Impulse will grab your intentions from your peripheral nervous system off of your muscles and relay that directly to your computer as a mouse click, thereby providing up to 80 milliseconds improvement to your reaction time. Wow. Wow. So it's basically reading the electrical impulse of your nerve before it moves your muscle. You got it. Uh, <laughs> rather, yes. Yeah, so just as the signal reaches the muscle. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's right at that edge. Yeah. So you're yeah, basically exactly. you're basically shortcutting the muscle, the muscular response that it takes to push the button and making that neuron fire push the button directly. You got it, <laughs> dude. That is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. That has to be one of the most awesomely nerdy applications of this I've ever heard. Uh, without getting too proprietary and giving away all your dirty secrets. Um, let's go into this a little bit because sure. I've, I've literally started like driving my brain, uh, driving my synthesizers back here with my brain waves, things like that. So I would love to get a glove like this to like drive uh, control voltage on my synthesizers with my hands with gestures. That would be like very that. cool. So um, tell us a little bit about this technology. What brought you about to obviously you're a gamer. I don't know anybody else that would try to short circuit this the physical system of gaming other than a gamer <laughs> yeah exactly i am um i think like a lot of people my age i've been a gamer for most of my life so uh brink Bionics started actually as a prosthetics company uh both my co-founders uh, are world leaders in developing neural interface technology in the academic research sphere so we started building bionic limbs with integrated artificial intelligence to make a more intuitive control system uh in our time with that uh, developing that kind of technology, we wanted to be able to innovate on neurotech faster than we could with a medical device company. Um, in part um, because you know the, there's lots of barriers to entry for medical device companies. If you want to sell something that treats a medical condition, there's a lot of regulations you need to pass through. So we wanted to focus on a market where we could release uh, innovations and newer versions of technology much faster without barriers to entry. Um, so that's part of the reason we shifted from prosthetics to um, neurotech specifically for esports. The second one was um, there's a lot of companies we found that were already building prosthetics with that were affordable and had integrated machine learning. So as a team, we decided, well, we can either do the same thing everybody else is doing, or we can try and do something totally crazy and different that nobody has tried before. There's been other muscle sensor technology for consumers, but nothing that is geared so targeted at esports before. And so that's why we decided to shift to this technology. I, I cannot wait until I hear about the first kerfuffle at a at an esports gaming con where somebody's using your device and they claim oh, yeah. it's cheating. I I can't wait. I can't wait. Like I cannot wait until you are the controversy in the gaming world because it's gonna happen. Oh absolutely. It, I it's mean it's gonna happen though like oh that guy got the high score on Donkey Kong because of that stupid glove man. Like he didn't actually jump all those barrels the way he should you know um so Explain a little bit how uh, how your technology actively, I guess, um, reads what's going on inside of your hand. Uh, because right. I think a lot of people don't realize um, the inductive technology that you're using to read those electrical impulses, that kind of stuff. Sure. So um, with uh, what we measure is EMG called electromyography. And it's basically the... 
electrical signal that manifests inside your muscle when a motor unit action potential, when a, a signal from your peripheral nervous system hits your muscle. Um, there's an exchange of ions across the muscle membrane, and then you get this uh, tiny voltage change in the muscle. Um, and then the muscle takes time to contract enough to generate enough force to move your finger. So there's actually a delay between that electrical signal first showing up in your muscle and the finger actually moving enough or any joint in your body moving enough to perform an action. And that time delay is what we take advantage of. So conventionally with any type of nervous system interface, whether it's using EEG for you know a brain sensing headset or muscle sensor technology, the algorithms need to collect a certain amount of data over time before they can make a decision on what you're trying to do. And that could be you know, anywhere from you know, 50 to 300 milliseconds of data the system is waiting to collect before it decides wow. what you want to do. Now, as you can see just from me saying that, you know, a, a system that waits 300 milliseconds to make a decision could never be used for gaming because that's no. a third of a second delay. Yeah. So what my co-founders and I have developed is algorithms that are able to make decisions on a very small amount of data. So we can collect a few milliseconds of data, know what you're going to do, within the context of gaming and then relay those intentions to your game. So that's where our difference lies. Wow. Wow. And, and I mean, the applications of this technology in various fields, I mean, the first one that comes into mind, of course, is drones, yep. uh, drone yep. control, especially drone racing, that kind of stuff where that, where that speed and precision control is absolutely necessary. Um, but also when you're talking about just, plain old drone camera operation, that kind of stuff, um, <clears throat> where it's going to predictively send you on your path to begin with and make it a more fluid, enjoyable experience, a more fluid experience in the drone path to begin with. Right. And Neurotech's going to do that. Imagine no longer having to carry a physical controller. You are the controller. Um, yeah. And that's why Neurotech, yeah, absolutely changes more spaces than just gaming. Now, are you guys looking at the application of this technology in other fields? Are y'all looking at what what are some of the other use cases you guys are considering? So there are definitely, like you've said, you know, drone and robotics control use cases. As of right now, what we've learned from both my co-founders, uh, a lot of time in academia, uh, it's important with neurotech to really pick a direction and develop and tailor your hardware and algorithms for that specific problem. So for now, we're focused on the different problems we can solve in gaming and esports, but there are a lot of applications, basically any applications where someone is moving and needs yep. to move more efficiently or faster, our technology can be applied. Yeah, oh, man. Just so many, like, my brain is a buzz right now with the applications of this stuff. So exciting to see somebody uh, so young with such verve and excitement for something um, taking the reins on a project like this. Uh, how long have you guys been in development? Is this something that is currently available on the market? Are you looking for a launch anytime soon? So, um, yeah, so we've been in development. Brink Bionics has been around since 2017, uh, but okay. we've been in development with this technology for under two years. Um, we launched our Kickstarter uh, November, December of last year. Uh, where we hit our goal and got our first pre-orders, which is really exciting. Uh, and for anybody who's missed those pre-orders, we also have an Indiegogo on-demand page up now where you can order an imp a pre-order impulse uh, for about another month. Um, and that you can access that link just by going to brinkbionics.com and that'll take you right to our Indiegogo page. Fantastic. And what is the entry point on this item? Uh, so right now it's uh, $177 Canadian. Oh my Lord! That is nothing. That's nothing. Like a, a decent flight controller or driving simulator controller will set, set you back that much. You yes. know, like a, a good yeah. set of headphones, like what you're wearing, will set you back 129. And that's just a set of headphones with a microphone, man. Yeah. Um, know that, <laughs> dude. I'm getting one. I am going. I am going on to any GoGo, and I am adapting this to control my synthesizers. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Let me know how that works. That's awesome. That's a great idea. Because that would be so much fun. Um, I, I like I said, I could see so many different ways that this technology could be used and cross-platformed in in different ways. So thank you guys so much for coming, bringing this to our attention. So exciting, especially when you start considering the future of robotics, the future of interface control, anything like that. This is where it's going right Absolutely. here. Absolutely. I'd um, like to think so. 
beyond this is is literally just brain wear. It's it's wearing a band and controlling it with your mind. That's the only place it can go beyond that. Yeah. So um, the fact that you guys have this control out there right now and it's available too cool, man. Too Thank cool. Thank you very much, um, man. You have a great rest of your CES. I'm sure that you were more than busy with this technology. Uh, I hope to see you guys at a booth next year with all kinds of tech uh, that's being driven by this. It's going to be so much fun. We're hoping CES is in person <laughs> next year so we can get more people to try it. Thank you very much for the opportunity to come on and talk about it. Absolutely. Take care and enjoy the rest of your digital CES experience. You too. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>I hope you enjoyed that interview, and if you did, make sure you check out some of the more than 100 interviews we conducted during the virtual CES 2021 coverage. And of course, subscribe here on YouTube, hit the notification bell to learn when we post new content and when we go live.